Hello and welcome to Coding in a Cup of Java, lecture number four, Arrays. So, right, here we go. This time we're going to talk about what we sort of ended with last time. The last time we had these for each loops uh, which we could use to loop through a specific sequence. These sequences are called Arrays and that's exactly what we're going to talk about, hence the title of the lecture. So an array um, is basically a variable where you can store, so, uh, well, store um, multiple values. So instead of just having an integer uh, where you can store like 5, 20, minus 3, whatever, we can have an integer array. And an integer array therefore allows us to um, to store like, if, if we have an integer array of the length 5, then we can store 5 different integer values. So let's start with some code, shall we? So I'm here back in the interactions pane and uh, just going to start with a simple example and I'm going to go through what we're doing there with it. Um, so that's when we declare it and then we can refer to it like this. Like I said, I'm just going to type this out so you can see an example and then I'm going to go through line by line what we're actually doing. Um, like that and then finally we want to print out something array like this. So what we're doing is first of all we're declining a variable like we usually do it uh, but instead of just doing int we do int and then a pair of square brackets. So we use those square brackets to tell it this is an array. So instead of having an int we have an integer array. So int square brackets there. And instead of giving it a value we give it uh, or well an integer value we give it a we create a new integer array and you can do that in a few different ways. Um, this way here uh, gives us a integer array of the length 5 so we can store 5 different values in it. Um, so that's being created. Uh, the default values on, on uh, of all the values, the 5 different values are 0 because the default value of an integer is 0. But then we can change the value um, and you do that uh, in the same way that you change the value of a variable. But you have to do one more thing. Since since you can have multiple values inside an array, because that's what you have them for, you need to refer to the index. So we ha we have here we have the uh, first value of, of the five values in the array because we are referring to index zero. Then we did the same thing here. We set we set uh, the the uh, second value the. Um, the one at index one to twenty. So, so basically, we have multiple values, but apart from that, we use it the same. We just have to refer to the index all the time, which is exactly what we do here as well. Uh, we want to get the value at index zero, and then we we run, we get three. Yes, because well, we create the array, we store some data there and store some data there, but then when we print it out, we refer to index zero, and that's where we put the three. So therefore, it's going to print out out the three like so. So that's a very uh, simple example there on, on how you set up an array. So now I'm going to use it in a bit of a bigger uh, example. Not too big, but just something up here. Um, so we do an array example, like the following. And, uh, you know, the normal thing, public static void main string square brackets. Yeah, this, what we have here, that we've typed all the time without actually realizing what it is, is a array, uh, well, a string array called args. So that's that's actually exactly what this part is. A bit more to it, what it is, uh, why we have it there, uh, is going to be discussed in, like uh, next time. But... Uh, next lecture. But in the end of this lecture we're actually going to talk about how we can use these for, for something something properly. Um, so, but that will be later. So now I can do that and then we want some numbers. So numbers equals new int 4. So by typing 4 there that means that we have a integer array where we can store four different values. And I'm just going to store those values here. So let's have 5. Let's have uh, two there. Numbers uh, two and let's go with minus one and then finally the last one three there equals ten. So as you can see since I have 
uh, the length of, of 4, I have 4 different values, and since you start at 0, we get 0, 1, 2, and 3 as the different in the indices. So we refer, we refer to the correct index, and, and, and then we just give it a value like so. Nothing special really, you just refer to the index itself. Then now, since, since we have it like that, we can very easily um, just sum these together. So we can do numbers.length, that's going to give us the length of the array, which is 4. Observe that, we, that when we use a length um, on strings to check how long they were, we had to use uh, an empty pair of parentheses there. But we're not supposed to do that when we do the arrays. I know it might be a bit confusing and at times you might mix them up, but that's how it is. So when we use arrays, yes, do numbers.length. Um, and when we use strings, then it's numbers of eleven. Uh, some 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 parentheses there. Right, uh, and now we can easily just calculate the sum uh, like this, and then we print out the sum in the end. So what's going on here is basically we have an array here with with the, f the different numbers that we want to use. We have an a, a integer variable there called sum, and then we just loop through them all, the the different ones there, uh, because then each time we loop through, we're going to start at zero and end uh, just below the maximum number. So we will uh, go from zero and then one, two, and three, and then we stop. So just because we do that, we can grab the value at that specific position in the array and therefore we will grab the, the number at that position. So what we do is basically we sum all the numbers together. Um, so let's compile and save that. And compilation complete. And if we run it now, uh, come on, run it. There you go. Uh, it's going to give us 16 because 5 plus 2 minus 1 plus 10 equals 16. So it's a very easy it's very easy now, but just because we have them all in the sa same array, we can just refer to them by an index that we can ca like refer to with a variable. We have the integer uh, variable called i, and that's also looping. So instead of having four different uh, variables that we just add together, uh, we can do this instead. But, but obviously, if we want to add four numbers together, four normal integers, then we can just add them together. It's pretty straightforward. But the, what the good part with this is, if we want more integers, we can just add them, and it's going to loop through them anyways. So it's not like um, like we have to add more and more code. Um, it's still going to sum them together. So it's a very nice way to to make your code expandable. And we'll see more examples on that later on. In the end of the last lecture, however, we were talking about for each loops. Uh, so you can loop through these sequences, these arrays, um, and why not do that here? Because the only thing we're, we're actually doing with the variable here is to get a number at a specific location. And if you remember from last time, what we did was to have the type of, of the uh, of the element, of a specific element in the array, and then we do a name, and I use E here for element, you can do like number, number would work, well, let's go with number, because we're, we get one number, uh, and then we do use a colon, and then we use the uh, name of the array we want to loop through. But obviously we want to get I here now, now we'll get something called number. So what we'll do here is the same thing. We loop through the numbers array there, and each time we, we loop through, we're going to get the current value as number. So first time we loop to, through through the, uh, the loop, we're going to get a 5 as number. Uh, second time we get a 2, then a minus 1, then 10. So it's basically going to sum these together still. Like that. Run. 16. So that's nice. Um, but the thing is, we have we have all these values uh, right away. We we know that we will uh, want to use five, two, minus one, and ten. So there's no real reason to tell us, well, tell the, the code that well we want an array with four uh, elements, and then we want to add these four elements there, because well, if we know which elements we have, then there's no reason to tell it to uh, well how long we have to make it, right? And yes, that's perfectly true, because we can just do uh, 5, 2, minus 1, 10, like so. So if you know the values you want already from the start, which is by far not always the case, but if, if you have 
those numbers already, then you can just do it like this. Much easier, much simpler, coders are lazy, there you go, compile it, and um, compilation completed, and we hit run, there you go. So, you, when you create an array, you can do so by uh, doing new and then the variable type and then square brackets and inside those you you um, use the amount of uh, elements you want so you can do like new and uh, and then like five then we get five elements but but like I just showed here you can also do square brackets and just put your elements in here like so and that works for anything if you want to use a uh, string array then you can just type uh, hello and world. So that's t a string array of length two uh, that we just create like so. Right. So now we have done this tiny little example to to show to show really how how you can use them. Uh, but it doesn't really do much. It's just adding some numbers together. So I'm g going to show you a bit of a bigger example, which is going to include some user input and it's going to include weather. You can't like have a discussion without discussing the weather, right? Um, so what it's going to do is basically going to ask the user about the different temperatures during the different days and then print that out afterwards. So so it's not going to be too useful to have, but it's an example of how we can refer to to, uh, to some arrays and how to assign values and so on. So uh, I think it's pretty good to have. Public static void main like that, and then we do the string here, oops, the string array called args and like I said we'll talk about that later um, and I just create the scanner calls new scanner system dot n like so okay so we want to loop through the different days of the week uh, to ask the, the user about temperatures during those days so it would be nice to be able to say like uh, what temperature was it last one day or temperature was it last Friday or temperature was it like last su Sunday so I'm just going to create an array here with all the different days so we have and like I said before if we know the values already we don't have to tell it how long it is we just have to add the values so then we go Monday uh, Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday. Look, I know, I know, I know the days. Friday, Saturday, today they go, and final Sunday. So now, when we have those, we can just refer to to this days array to know. Well, we know how many days we have because we can just change check the length of the of that array. We can check which day uh, the second day is uh, in the week. We can just do like days uh, square bracket one to get to get Tuesday, for instance. Uh, did I type that wrong? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Apparently, I didn't know the the. Uh, days of the week. Uh, but right, we wanted to ask about the temperature. So we want to store the different temperatures depending on, on the day. And we know that the, um, we want one temperature th per day, so it's like an average, a max, I don't know. Um, so the, the length of this array here um, is the same as the day, so then we can just refer to that. So we can do new end, and then we type the, the length of the uh, the array we want, and that's the same length as the days array. So now we're making sure that these two arrays are actually at the exact same length, which makes sense if we have an, a specific amount of days and we want to uh, have a temperature for each, then it makes sense to have them in the same length. So here we go, uh, a list of all uh, uh, weekdays, well all the days, all the days, uh, like that. Um, and now we want to uh, ask the user for these different temperatures. So if I do this, um, well, that's you, you'll see. So I loop through uh, the different days, and you might think, well, you can just use a for each loop, right? Yeah, um, no, not really, because I want to use this i variable for two things. First of all, I want to access which day we're at, uh, so I can just refer to that array. But then I want to store some values in temperatures, so I need to know the index where I want to store it. So, um, so that's why I can't use a for each loop. So you can use for each loops when it's possible, but sometimes it's it's not. It's um, you can't use it for for everything. So which temperature was it last? And then we just add a name, and 
when we have an array, we refer to it like we've seen before by typing the name of the the array like it like any uh, variable, but then we give it the index, and the index here is uh, the variable. So the variable i is so the loop there. So days i, um, and then let's add a question mark. So at the moment now it's going to loop through all the days. Uh, we can try it now. We're not going to actually get any user input. So compile and save that. Like so. Compilation completed and uh, hit run. So now it's going to ask us all the days. So uh, which temperature was it last Monday? Which temperature was it last Tuesday? Which temperature was it last Wednesday? And so on. But as you can see, the program is not done. We're not actually getting that information from anywhere. So, so then we can just do temp temperatures. And then we refer to that when the index i. And then we do my scanner dot next end. So as you can see now, we're actually getting seven different values pretty easily. We, we just loop through seven times and we get the, the temperature from the user. Um, I don't know if it's in Celsius or Fahrenheit or Kelvin or whatever. It doesn't really matter in this example. So we, we, we don't specify that. So the user can decide it all on, it, on its own. And in the end, we want to uh, to print that data out, but still we can't use a for each loop because we would like to have, uh, well, would like to refer to both the uh, the days and the uh, the temperatures. So then we can do system dot r dot print ln like so, and then we do days i, and, uh, and we do something like temperatures like that. So if I hit the compile now, um, now I can run it. It's going to ask for which number was the last Monday. I don't know what type of system we're using, so I'm just going to use something, so my own my own system. So it was 2,000 temperature units, uh, degrees of some sort. Here it was like uh, 60. It doesn't really matter in this example, so I'm just going to add a bunch of numbers here. Uh, so that was Saturday, and now it's going to ask about Sunday. Um, like that. So it's not Celsius, it's not Fahrenheit, it's not Kelvin, it's just random stuff here. Uh, so Monday it was 2000 whatnot degrees, Tuesday 60, Wednesday 200, Thursday 699, Friday 123,123, and Saturday 330, and Sunday 90. I don't know why, that's just how it is apparently. So what we're doing in this program is, first of all, we declare a scanner. We declare the different days we want to use, and then a, a, an, a another array that has the same length. And finally, we we loop through, get the uh, get the temperatures from the user. We print out uh, which temperature was it last, uh, and then we add a Monday, Tuesday, whatnot, and uh, we print out the result afterwards. But what's very clever now, because we're defining the the days we want to to go through, and we're defining uh, an integer array that has the same length as that array. And then when we do our two loops, we just loop through from from zero to just below the the length of the days array. That means that your whole co code depends on the length of the the days array. Why is that good? Well, if we all of a sudden want to have a different program that that just checks for for the temperatures, well, ask for the temperatures during Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, then we can just remove the other ones from the days list, and all of a sudden it's going to ask us which temperature was it last Friday, because now that's the first one, and if I type uh, 200 there, and then it's going to ask me for, for Saturday, because that's the second one, uh, and then it's going to ask me about uh, Sunday, and since that's the last one, we're done, and it's going to print out the results, f uh, Friday 200, Saturday 500, Sunday 9001, but we didn't do anything in the code, the only thing I did was to, uh, well that's in the code still, but but you know, the only thing I did was change the days we wanted to work with. So instead of doing the same thing over and over again, like having having the same code multiple times and store it in like temperature temperature Monday, temperature Tuesday, temperature uh, Wednesday, and so on, like different variables, we can have just an a integer array with the temperatures and a, a string array with the days we want to. So then we can just define the days we want like this. Uh, we can even do other things like read day that doesn't exist okay so if i if i hit compile now and run it 
And first we have Friday, then we have Saturday, then we have Sunday, and then it's going to ask us which temperature was it uh, last weird day that doesn't exist. Well, exists. Uh, and it's just going to use that like like any anything else like that. So it's very handy to just refer to the different indices. We loop through the, depending on the length of the days array, um, and we also create the temperature to be the same length. So a pretty basic example, but it shows us the power of arrays pretty pretty neatly, uh, in my opinion. But I I, I probably said that earlier that we can have have arrays of any types at all. Right? So we can have integer arrays, we can have string arrays, as you can see, those are the ones we have now. We can have char arrays, we can even have scanner arrays. I don't know why you would, but you can. And you can also have an array out of an array, obviously, because if we can have it of any types, and if we make an array of an integer, then that's also type. So we can actually make multidimensional arrays, which are basically arrays out of arrays. So if I start here, I can do int uh, square bracket square bracket. So that's going to give me a two-dimensional array, just because we have an array and then we add square brackets to it. So we, we create an array out of arrays. And to create one, one of them, we basically do a new, and then the type, and then the double square brackets, like so, and then we add the length to the different dimensions, like so, for instance. So now the outer array has a length of 3, and, and the inner array has a, well, each of the inner arrays has a length of 2. I will show you further on exactly how it looks like it's easier in it very soon to see. So if I do that, then I can set, for instance, 0, 0, uh, like that, to 5. So I refer to the the outer uh, array there, and then I get an array, uh, and I refer to the other. So I refer to uh, the different in, uh, d different dimensions. So in the first here, I refer to index 0, and the second I refer to index 0. So it's pretty much the same as we just did with a one-dimensional one, but we just do it twice. So then I can do it like so. So so far there's nothing special at all. We just refer to it with double indices instead. Instead of just having one index, we have a square bracket uh, and one index and square bracket and the other index, and we just do the same thing. And in a similar way that we did before, when we create an array with the fault values, or well, when we know the values already, uh, we can do that with curvy brackets. So if I do that, and then I do 1, 5, um, 2, 1, and in the end I do 4, minus 1. So as you see now, uh, I have these arrays here. So these are basically tiny integer arrays with two numbers each. If you recognize them from, from uh, our previous examples, we can go up here to the array example. Um, when we create this numbers array, we do so like that. So we do in square bracket numbers equals and then the curve brackets and all all the different numbers there. And that's exactly what we have here in here. So that's one array with two numbers. Here's one array with two numbers. Here's one array with two numbers. And then we have an array out of arrays. So that's basically what a multidimensional array is. We make an array out of arrays. So if I create this another test there, and then I can refer to uh, an index in the an uh, another test. Remember the another test, this variable here, that's an array out of uh, of arrays. So then I can can get an element there, one dimensional array here, equals another test one. So what I've done here is basically created a variable to hold one element. So since we have an array out of arrays, then each element is obviously an array. And therefore, if we create a a variable that can hold an array, an integer array, then we can access the, the element at that index, so that's this array here, and store it in the array, in this array. So there's a lot of arrays here. Um, and then we can pretty basically just use that array like any other one-dimensional array that we've used before. And uh, how did we do that? Well, just like that. So what we do now is 
we have the two-dimensional one up here. Then we access the uh, the uh, subarray, if we call it that, uh, at index one. That's that array. And when we have this array, we access the element at index zero, which is this one. So we just do it in two steps. First, we grab the the element of the outer array, and then that's obviously an array, and therefore we grab the element at a specific lo location there. And that's actually what we do up here. It's not something new. The only thing we do is that we have an array, we grab the element, and from that element we grab another element, which uh, uh, in this case is is five. We set it to five. Right. So here's another thing to to uh, keep in mind, if I do this, I use the uh, the variable I have already, another test, and I refer to one zero. So which one is that? Well, it's the same that we just had, right? Um, so one zero. So if you first get that element there, and inside that we get that element. So that's the two. So if I print that out, it should say two, and it does. Awesome. Then I can use the one uh, dimensional array one dimension array and I can refer to zero so that's the same thing right that's that one so we get the element at, at index one that's this array which we store in one dimension array and then we refer to the index zero but if I do it like this now if I set it to 10 okay so I changed the value of the one dimensional array what happens now if I print out that value from the two-dimensional array. What this actually going to show me is 10, even though I didn't change the two-dimensional array. So why is this happening? Well, basically what's going on is that when we get the value um, from the two-dimensional array like this, we're not getting a copy of it. We're actually getting what's inside the two-dimensional array. We get this array. And therefore, if we change it, like like the like the in that, we're actually changing the array inside the other array. So so they are just referring to the same values, and therefore if we change it from somewhere, then it's going to change when ref referred from another uh, another location. So you can't like just grab an array outside of the two-dimensional array and change it and hope that it's not going to change the original, because it's going to do that. If so, if you want to do that, you will have to copy it, like copy all the values, leave through the values, copy them out. Um, and there's some built-in in, in functionalities for, for copying values as well. So th that's something you will have to look out for. And usually it's very useful. You will see in later examples where I'm going to use it uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, to uh, to do things in uh, easier in some examples. So right, and uh, then we can do something else. Uh, we can do. Uh, the length thing, if you remember, we can check the length of an array, right? We can also do that of a multi-dimensional array. And what length do we get? We get three. Why do we get three? Well, one, two, three. So the outer array, like like the the top level array, this thing here that starts there and ends there, that one has three elements. Those elements are obviously arrays, but still three elements. So as you can see. All, all the things we do is exactly the same uh, as we did before with the one-dimensional array. The only difference is that our elements are indeed also arrays, and that might get a bit confusing, but it's it's um, it's basically the same thing. So we could get like another test index zero dot length, and that's going to give us the length of of this piece here, which is uh, including one and five, and therefore the length is two. So how do we get the length of the whole thing? Like, how many integer values do we have? Well, we can't really do that. We we can um, do so if we assume that they all have the same same length. Then we can just take how many inner arrays do we have and how much uh, um, how many elements are there in it, and therefore we get six. In this case, it's correct, uh, but usually, or well, usually. Uh, in many cases it's not, which basically means you can have different lengths of the inner arrays. So that's totally fine, we just have an array after arrays, whatever the inner arrays are, it's none of our business really. Um, but otherwise you can just loop through and check how many they are. So let's let's see an example of, of that, uh, where we have different lengths to them. So we uh, create here, 
more tests and then we do like the first array here the first in array there go go with the one there and then we can have like a length of three here and finally we can have a oops there you go four and minus one and then we end it like so I don't know where this space come from um, there you go so as you can see this more test has the exact same amount of, of integers as the another test one but they are set up in a different way here we have have just one element inside uh, that array here we have three and here we have two instead of having two all the all, all over the place so if we run the same code that we just had uh, to calculate the length of of, of a array or well not the length of the array but the amount of integer values in a a two-dimensional array we're going to get the complete wrong answer we're going to get three just because well we know that we have three different arrays here and the first of them had the length of one so uh, so the, pr uh, the proper approach here would actually be to go uh, into each of them and check how long they are so loop through them all right and just a final example here what we can do when we create a multi-dimensional arrays uh, is the following so we can do int there and there and then we do all the tests and when we define it we don't have to specify all the, the sizes we have to specify the first one uh, but we don't have to specify the other ones if we don't want to so what I've done now is create a variable uh, with a, a an integer array of well an array of integer arrays and we want to fit two integer arrays in it so we have a length of two here whatever length the other ones have we don't really care at the moment because as you can see they can have different lengths so we have just specified the top level uh, length there so we have two arrays in our array so how do we do things now well we can try to print out a value shall we so we we print out the value of uh, all the tests and we refer to uh, zero zero like that um that's not going to work so here we go we're first null pointer exception you will see a lot of them in the future when we talk more about objects but what's happening here is basically well we created the outer array but we don't, didn't create any inner arrays the, the second dimension right so now we're referring to a value that doesn't exist because we refer to the first position and at that position we don't have anything but that's fine but then we try to refer to the first index of nothing and therefore we get a so-called null pointer exception so what we'll have to do is to make sure that we actually create something in there if we don't specify it fully usually if we do things like that or like, like um, up here like that then we have specified exactly its size and given it all the, its default values but if we do something like this we need to make sure that we actually fill the, the array with the, the inner arrays so what we can do for instance is all the tests and then we are at index 0 so that's the first of the arrays and then we just add an array there okay there you go fine done and all of a sudden if we would print that out again we're going to get 0 because well the default value is 0 so we created an, ar in an array there of length 2 so um, we have two integers there so we can refer to to a 1 there as well and that's the other value we created and then we can also of course do the all the tests here and refer to the one here and we can give that the value of uh, three two and one so we can create it like that as well all right that um, actually when when you when you give it a value like that we don't give it the whole value you know when we create a new array like this we we use the whole value like that uh, in, in the array here but if we don't do that we actually need to have this part as well in front of it to tell it what we're actually creating so it might be a bit confusing so if you didn't get that part um, I'm sorry I, I messed it up but then don't use it basically you can you can specify them in, in different ways as well uh, to start with at least so that's sort of a lot of information I think so it might be a bit tricky to grasp there so uh, let's get going with an example because this is just a lot of ton of things here so let's do that and that's going to be a very simple example it's going to be called a uh, well I call it a uh, multi-dimensional array example makes sense right multi-dimensional array example like so 
and then we do public static void main like always and then the string array of arguments because that's what it is we'll talk about that in the end of this lecture and uh, when we're in here I want to define a multi-dimensional array called numbers right and that's going to be and I'm going to type it in multiple lines here so we can easily see what's going on. We still have the semicolon at the end here, which means that all of this is just the same statement, but I type it on multiple lines to make it easy to see what's going on. So we have these inner arrays here with some values, uh, like this, and then we go minus 23, 14, 2, 0, 2, 5. So as you can see, I'm making them different lengths as well. Uh, here we have minus 3, 1, 2, 3, 44. And finally, I'm going to do a 2 and 1 there. So they are different lengths, but we have a multiple um, multi dimensional array here. We have four elements of the outer one. So we have one element, that's the first one. Here's the second element. Here's the third one, and that's the fourth element. And of course, they, they have their own elements, these elements. So now we might want to loop through and just print those values out. So a very simple example. And to do so, I'm just going to loop through the different dimensions. Um, like so. One could use the for each loop as well. And you will see examples of, of that after the break. Uh, like this. And then we go through, well, the length of, th of the specific one. We can't just use the length of the first one because that's not going to be true for all of them. We're not. We're going to miss this. We're going to refer to uh, some some values here that doesn't exist. So we need to refer to the uh, the array at that specific index. And then we get that length, uh, that one, that one's length, and uh, just increase that. So now we're looping uh, with uh, two loops here. So we have a nested for loop example as well. And instead of doing like the multiplication table that we did in the last example, uh, well, the last lecture, uh, we're just going to refer to the array we have. So let's print out a tab like we've done before to align it properly. And then we just do numbers, refer to that like i, j, uh, the parentheses there, exit out there, and just print a new line here. There you go. So if I compile this now, Save it. Yes. And then we can hit run. And it didn't work because I screwed up. It should be print here, right? Otherwise, we add a new line all the time. So it's printing out it very weirdly. It's printing all them all out. But if I instead just yes, do print, so system don't print, so it won't add a new line character afterwards, then we're going to get it in a much better way, as you see here. So actually, it's looking the same as these ones, right? So we loop through the different arrays here. And then inside them, we loop through their different elements and print them all out. And for each array here, we just do a line break. That's that one. And for the other ones, we just print them on the same line. So what I've done here is, first of all, shown that, that it's very easy to see how, how a multidimensional array uh, is set up by using multiple lines like this. And it's very easy to understand why this is a two-dimensional array, because all of a sudden we're, we're stretching out the values in two dimensions. And then we just loop through them. We first loop through the outer array, and then we loop through the inner array, and print out the values like so. And by adding tabs and new lines at proper positions, we actually get something that looks the same here. So we actually print out the values in a two-dimensional array as a two-dimensional array. But, like I've said, you can make arrays of any types. And we had a one-dimensional array, and we made an array of that, and that turned out to be a two-dimensional array. Well, we can use an make an array out of two-dimensional arrays, can't we? Well, of course we can. So if I add another bracket here, all of a sudden I have a three-dimensional array. And then I need to add some, some more values, obviously. So... Uh, I do it like like this, and uh, I can then add some uh, some more values here. So let's go with 32, 1, 2, 3, and 12, and then we can do one. So ver a very short one there, and then finally 2, 13, and one. 
So right, so at the moment we have, first of all we have the outer array here. The, the outer array consists of two elements. One of the elements is this thing, and one of the element, elements is this thing. Inside the first element we have the four, four different elements here, which in its turn ha consists of, of its elements, which is integers, like so. The other one here has um, three different elements, these ones, which also contains of, of its own integer elements, like so. When we loop through, we obviously have to loop through a third dimension as well. So I'm just going to add a third loop. So then we go and k equals zero. k is less less than numbers uh, i j. So that's the length of that array there. And then we increase that like so. Move this up a bit. Uh, I will put it there uh, as well. So after each uh, each line we add a new line, but all through each like each group here we're going to add another new line, like so. So we print out it twice, once here and once there. And then we just need to refer to k here as well. There we go. So if I hit compile, I get an error because I'm not referring to its length here. There you go. So I get the, the array at that position, but you can't compare that to to an integer, but if we refer to its length instead, we can do so, and that's exactly what we want. Um, here we go, then we hit run, and all of a sudden we get what we had up here in our array. So we loop through uh, all the different different arrays. So first of all we loop through, so we get that one first, and then that one. Inside these ones we go line by line, like this, and inside of them we, we go element by element, like this. So we print them all out uh, as the same uh, in the same way that we have actually represented them here. But like I said, it doesn't really matter how we print them out here. We can just print them out in one line. We can just add the square brackets after each other here, but it's going to be a bit tricky to read. So right, um, this example, it's not very useful. We just print out the things we have, but after the break, I'm going to show you a big example of things you can do. And then we're also going to talk about the um, the, these ones, the command line arguments as they are called, and I will tell you all about what those things are. But like I said, that's after the break, so I'll see you in about 15 minutes.